Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Mob Big Apple. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play through one complete game. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel in the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with great bonuses like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Now here we have the game fully set up for our two players. Now before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I'd also like to mention that today I'm filming with a prototype version of the game, so the art and components are not necessarily what you'll find in the final version. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of this two-player only game. Now thematically, this is set in New York City during the Prohibition era, and each player is in charge of a gang who is trying to control the market on illegal booze. Now we are going to do this by utilizing our henchmen, and they can be sent to the action board to perform a wide variety of different effects, and we can also roll these dice to then load those henchmen into specific cars so that they can go to the indicated locations to vie for the booze. Now we are going to keep sending our henchmen out until both players have deployed all of them, and then the round will come to an end where we are going to potentially do district attorney actions as we are having our opponent be investigated. We will also drive all of the cars into the middle, and then there will be a shootout in every single location where these henchmen will keep attacking each other until just one player's henchmen are left behind. After that, we will play another round, and only once the game is over after three rounds will players be able to gain the booze that is in these locations, and the player with the most henchmen in that spot at the end of the game will get those crates. Now, you may have noticed these tokens on each location, and those are moles, which have numbers on the back, which indicate an amount of henchmen that will show up there once the game is over to help vie for taking the booze in that specific spot. Now, I will describe all of these things in greater detail while we are playing, and I think at this point it's now time to start playing the game. Today, we are going to play as the tan player over here, and we are the starting player, so let's now take the first turn of the game. So, let's focus over here, and as you can see, we have 20 henchmen tokens in front of us. At the beginning of each round of the game, we are always going to take 20 henchmen from the supply, and once we have used all 20 of these henchmen, we will be done for the round. Now the structure of a player's turn has two steps, and the first of these involves potentially loading henchmen into cars. Now this step is entirely optional, but I think we should do it for our first turn. In order to do this, we have to start by rolling these two dice. Now they are not a typical d6, instead they have two ones, two twos, and two threes on each of them. Now we are going to roll these, and then these dice will dictate what our henchmen loading options are. Now one of these dice is going to indicate which of the six cars we will load up, and the other die will tell you how many henchmen will go into that car. So for instance, we can load three henchmen into the value one car down here, or we can load one henchman into the value three car. Now it's worth noting again that this step is optional, and you are allowed to roll the dice and then decide not to add any henchmen to the cars at all, and then proceed on to the next step of the turn. In this case, I do think we should add henchmen though, and it is worth noting that each of these cars can never have more than three henchmen in them. If you try to add more than three to that car, then all of the excess henchmen are placed back into the supply, not into your warehouse. With that in mind, it does seem good to place the maximum with just one roll, so I think let's go for it. We will target the value one car down here and send all three of these henchmen over to that car spot. Now it's important to note that these henchmen are still in the car and they won't reach that location until either the end of the round or earlier if we activate the drive action. Well, we are done loading up the henchmen and we can now move on to the second step of our turn where we must activate an empty action spot on this board. Now on the board, there are six overall action areas and within each, there are three available actions. In order to perform an action, you have to send a number of henchmen equal to the number that shows up within that area, and that specific spot must also be empty. Now, you are allowed to place into any of the empty spots. You don't have to go in order. And once you place down, you can then perform the action on the left, as well as any extra actions on the spot you chose. If you do get to perform multiple actions, you can take them in any order of your choice, and technically, you can decide to do none of those actions, but you are still forced to place henchmen down onto one of these spots if you have them available. If you happen to not have enough henchmen to activate any of these spots, then you simply return the rest of your henchmen back to your supply, and you will be done for the round. 
So in this case, we currently have 17 henchmen, and out here on the board, the action spaces cost 1, 2, 3, or even 4 henchmen to activate. Well, considering we have all 18 options available to us, I think the spot that we want to go onto is right over here. That does cost two of our henchmen, and then that will let us do one district attorney action, as well as this add one crate action. Well, we can perform these in either order, and we'll do this one first. That simply lets us take one crate of contraband from the supply, and then we can place it down into any of the six locations of our choice. And considering we've already loaded three of our henchmen up into this car, I think placing it down into Brooklyn is probably a good idea. That action is completed, and the only other one available to us is the main one for this area, and that lets us move the district attorney pawn. Now, when you do this action, you move the pawn one space towards your opponent, effectively shoving the district attorney in their direction so that your opponent will hopefully be investigated at the end of the round instead of you. As you can see, the district attorney token starts in the middle here, and we can perform this action, which will slide this one space over there. Now for the rest of the game, this middle spot is not actually a location, so that means if our opponent does a DA action, then this will actually jump over the middle and go onto that spot, so for the rest of the game, the district attorney token will be investigating one of us or the other. Now you may have noticed that there were action icons underneath these spots, and these will only be performed at the end of the round by the player who is not currently being investigated by the DA. Now I'll talk about the details of these actions a little bit later on in the tutorial, and for the moment we have completed all of our actions, so that has brought our second step of our turn to an end, and that means our turn is over. This means our opponent can go and they'll start by rolling the dice. Now they got a black 2 and a white 3, so that means they could put 2 henchmen into the white 3 location, or they could put 3 henchmen into the black 2 location. After considering these two, they've decided they want to go with this option, so that means they will put three of their henchmen into the black number two car, and now they can move on to the action step of their turn. In this case, they've decided to just send one henchman over, and they are going to do a district attorney action just like us. There is no other action on that spot though, so that's simply going to move the district token back towards the side. Once again, this is not a spot, that's just where the token begins at the start of the game. That's finished their turn. So let's start by rolling the dice. In this case, we got the black one that could have two henchmen go to it, or we could send one henchman to the white two. And before we make this decision, I'd like to talk a little bit more about these mole tokens here. Now, each player has six of them, and at the start of the game, we both allocated one of them to each of these locations. Now, these are hidden, so our opponent does not know what these say, and once the game is over and we are about to see who will get all of these contraband crates, we will flip these over and add that number of henchmen into these areas. So effectively, that means this spot gets three endgame henchmen, and that spot gets two. Now, there are ways to move these around, and there are also ways for our opponent to reveal these, which would then put those henchmen onto that location immediately instead of at the end of the game. Now in this case, you can see we put our two threes over here. We're trying to be a little bit sneaky, having a strong tile on that spot that starts off with just one of these contrabands, but perhaps we can sneak in over there and take a bunch of contraband once the game is over with our opponent not expecting that three to be there. Now with that in mind, maybe that's enough for us to bolster that spot a little bit more, putting two onto that location, or maybe we don't want to make it obvious that we're strong on that spot and instead go for this plan. I think this is probably going to be the thing I'd rather do, and that is just going to put a single henchman into that car. All right, let's now take an action. So let's focus up here, and I think let's spend just one henchman to activate this spot, and that will let us drive. Now this means we can select one car that currently has any number of henchmen in it, and that car will then move into the indicated location on that row. So I think we should target our car in Brooklyn, and then all of the henchmen from that car will be driven over to Brooklyn. Now that has two benefits for us. The first is that this car is empty now, so we could potentially load more henchmen into it, and then those will be automatically driven to Brooklyn at the end of the round. And the second benefit is that there is a shoot action over there on the board that can target our henchmen in cars, but not our henchmen in locations. So that means these three are protected from being shot at in the middle of the round anyway. There is always a shootout at the end of each round, and I'll describe how that works later on. All right, we've finished our drive action, which means it's now time for the blue player to go. So they'll start by rolling the dice. 
and these will let them put three henchmen over here on the white two car, or two into the black three. Now, at the start of the game, you may have noticed some of these locations have more crates in them than others, but there are ways to add crates, as we've already seen, and there are also ways to move these crates around, so just because Hell's Kitchen started with more than Little Italy does not mean that it will end that way. Now, the blue player has decided they would like to send three henchmen over to the number two car location that is going to be heading into Little Italy. After that, they must take an action, and they're going to send one henchman here, and that lets them simply do a move contraband action. This means they can take one crate of contraband from any location and move it to another, and considering we are going hard over here on Brooklyn, they've decided to move one from Brooklyn and place it over here into Harlem. Their turn is now done, so we can go, and let's start by rolling the dice. Well, we got two threes, so that means we can place three henchmen into either uh, the Hell's Kitchen car or the Chinatown car. Now, I think it's not actually going to matter. Let's go ahead and pick Chinatown in this instance. And the reason I don't think it matters is because we are about to do a change cars and drive action. That one is right over here, and it's just going to cost one of our henchmen. And this is essentially a combination of the drive and change cars action. Now, we haven't actually seen the change cars action just yet. That lets you move any number of henchmen from one car to any other of your cars, as long as after you've moved, you don't have more than three henchmen in any cars. Now, we have to do the change cars part of this action before we do the drive part. So let's go ahead and move all three of our henchmen from the Chinatown car over to the Harlem car. Now that we have done the change cars action, we can drive, so let's just drive all three of these over into Harlem. Now the reason we are doing this is because the blue player is already committing pretty strongly to try and uh, put a big presence into Harlem, so I figure it's a good idea to try and counteract that by sending in at least as many of our henchmen, if not potentially more. We did clear this spot off so that we can possibly add even more there later on in the round. Alright, that's finished our turn which means the blue player can go, and they've rolled a white three and a black two. Now, considering the big push that we just made, they would love to go with the black two, but as you can see, that car is currently full. So instead, they could send two henchmen over here towards Chinatown, or of course, they could just not send any henchmen at all. In this case, though, they do think this is worth it, so they are going to take two henchmen and put them into that car. After that, they must take an action, and they are going to use three of their henchmen to activate this spot over here. Now, that will let them drive one of their cars, and it's going to give them a DA action. So they'll do that first, moving the DA token one space farther towards their opponent. After that, they can drive one of their cars, and they have indeed decided to drive the car over here in Harlem. So there are now three henchmen for each player in this spot already, and there is the strong possibility of more joining in before the end of the round. Well, that's finished their turn, which means it's time for us to go, and we have rolled a white three and a black one. In this case, I think let's just send one henchman over here. I know we could send three henchmen towards the uh, black one spot, which is the Bronx, but I also like the idea of maybe spending less of our henchmen than our opponent so that we could potentially take multiple turns in a row later on in the round if they have spent all of their henchmen and we have not done that yet. So we've placed over there and now we have to take an action. As I just said, I would like to try and spend as little henchmen as possible right now to try and outlast our opponent. So let's spend one over here. Now that will give us just one action and that lets us move one of our mole tokens. The way we do this is simple. We just take any one of our tokens and move it onto another location. Each location can have any number of mole tokens for either player. Now, I think maybe putting this three over there in the Bronx was not the best idea at the start. Uh, currently, there's really no action going on over there either. And there are three of these contraband crates in Hell's Kitchen currently. So let's add this three over to Hell's Kitchen, which already has a three. So we are effectively hiding out six henchmen that will arrive there once the game is over. Of course, as long as we haven't moved these away and as long as our opponent hasn't revealed either of these tokens. All right, that's finished up our turn, so now the blue player can go. They're going to start by rolling the dice, and they got two twos. Overall, they seem pretty happy about this. They did just drive the Harlem car on their last turn, so now they can come back to this car and load up two more henchmen into it. After that, they have to take an action, and they are going to spend three of their henchmen to go onto this spot. That will give them a DA action, which will slide this over one more, 
And it is worth noting, if you ever try to move the DA, but it's already in the last spot, then instead you simply take any one crate from any of the locations on the board and you add it into your warehouse where it will stay for the rest of the game. Once the game is over, the player with the most crates at the end will win. So that is effectively banking one victory point for you. After that DA move, they can now move one crate from one location to another. In this case, they're going to move the last crate from Brooklyn over here to Little Italy, and I'm now feeling a little silly about having all of these henchmen over here where there are no crates to take, but again, we only get the crates once the game is over after three full rounds, so we have time to try and fix that situation. All right, blue is done, so now we can go, and we rolled a two and a one. With this, we are allowed to send one henchman over here to Harlem, and I think we may as well do that. Now, after that, we have to take an action. And I think we want to perform this one here. That is going to cost two of our henchmen. And then we will get to do a move crate action. And we can do the first shoot action of the game. Well, I think let's start off with the shoot action. The way this works is we have to select one of the two dice and then roll it. And then if there are any henchmen in the car associated with that die, then all of those henchmen are going to be successfully shot at and returned to the supply. Now we can see our opponent has two white cars that have henchmen in it and just one black car with henchmen. So I think let's roll this die so that we have a two thirds chance of shooting up one of these two cars. So let's see how we do. And we got a three. Now that's better than a one for sure. And that targets this car. As you can see, there are two henchmen here. So we successfully shoot at this car and both of these will be returned to the blue player's supply. Overall, they are definitely not happy to see that happen. After that, we can move a crate, and I think we'll just move this one back from Little Italy over here into Brooklyn. All right, it's time for the blue player's turn, and they rolled a three and a two. Now, that means they could put these last two into the third white car, or they could put up to three into the second black car. If you have henchmen, then you must place them up to the number on the die, but if you don't have enough to match that die, you just put in as many as you can. In this case, Blue has decided they don't actually want to load any henchmen into cars, so they are going to ignore that first step and now perform an action. In this case, they have decided to go onto this spot, which costs two henchmen, and that will let them do a car change as well as a DA action. They've decided to do the DA action first, and as I mentioned before, whenever you try to move this over but there are no other spots, you instead gain this action immediately that lets you take any one cargo from any location and put it into your warehouse. So unfortunately, the blue player is going to target Brooklyn and remove that last crate once again, and it will go over here where it is going to stay for the rest of the game, and once again, the player with the most crates over here when the game is over is going to win. The main way we're going to get these crates is by having henchmen in locations with these crates once the game is over, but of course, getting crates in the middle of the game is certainly a good thing as well. Well, the blue player's turn is done, and they don't have any more henchmen. That means we get to go, and we will keep taking turns until all of our henchmen are gone. Now, I have to admit, I am regretting ignoring the DA track as much as I have. The blue player has made really good use of that so far. So if there's a chance we could try to move this back before the end of the round, I would like to take it. If we look out here on the board, there is just one spot, though, and that costs four. It would also let us do a shooting action, but that would be all of our henchmen, and I'm not sure if that's worth it. Either way, we can start things off by rolling the dice, and we got a white three and a black two. Well, one thing we could do is target the black car and then send three of our henchmen. But as you can see, there is already one henchman over there in that car. Now, the way this would work is we would still send the three because we have them in our warehouse, but then any excess from the three on this car would go back to the supply instead of staying in our warehouse. So I don't think that's what we want to do. Instead, let's send two henchmen over to the white three car. That already had one in it, so now that car is full. Now we have to take an action and we have two henchmen. Now, if we were to go onto either of these one henchman spots, then that means we could roll the dice again and then potentially place our last henchman into the spot that we roll into, or we could even use it for another one value action out here, or we could just go onto a more powerful spot that takes two. Now, I think the first option is actually gonna be a little bit better, especially considering we can go over here for just one, and that lets us do a car change and a drive as well as a shooting action, which could potentially help us by taking out some blue henchmen. Now let's do the shoot action first. 
Now we do have to pick a die, and there are just two cards we could hit. Unfortunately, they are in different colors, and this is a reason to try and spread your henchmen out amongst the two different colors of cars. I think let's go for white, though. This car has three henchmen to the two, so hopefully we can get a two, and we didn't. So we're going to shoot this car, but there are no henchmen over there, so that action did not actually have any effect. After that, we can do a car change and a drive action. So I think let's leave Little Italy with this person and head over here to Harlem, and then we can drive into Harlem. So we now have five people already at that location. Well, that's finished our turn, and we have one henchman left. So let's roll the dice again, and we can add this henchman either to the white number one car down here or the black number two car, which is a pretty busy spot over here in Harlem. Now, I think we definitely don't want to add down into Brooklyn. We've already overcommitted, as you can see. So let's go ahead and add this one over here. And at this point, we are out of henchmen. So that means we are done with our turn, which means we can move on to the end of round phase. The way this works is we are going to go through four steps in order. And the first of these has all of the cars drive all of their henchmen into their associated locations. So that means this will head in over there as well as the rest of these. And then it's time to resolve the DA track. Now, the player who is not being investigated gets to take all of the actions on that specific spot. Obviously, we are being investigated because this token is closer to us. So that means our opponent can do each of these. Now, this action is just like the one we've already seen. So that lets them take a crate from any location and put it into their warehouse. And then this one lets them reveal a mole. The way this works is they can select any of our moles and then flip it over. And they're curious about what's going on over here in Hell's Kitchen. So they're going to select this one, and it shows a three. So what that means is they are going to take three of our henchmen and place those over here into Hell's Kitchen right now. And then this mole is removed from the game. They have effectively revealed a potential surprise, so now they can plan around knowing that number. After that, they can take another crate from a location and put it into their warehouse, and they're going to take this one here. So they already have two in their warehouse, which is a pretty good start for them. After that, it's time for the shootout. What happens is every location that has henchmen of both of the players will then have those henchmen shoot at each other, and each henchman is going to take out an opposing henchman. So we can just take away pairs of different types of henchmen, and we keep doing this until just one color henchman is remaining. Now these are going to go back to the supply, so that means we can keep removing these, and as you can see, it's a bit of a bloodbath over here in Harlem. Now once all is said and done, we had one more henchman over there, so we are now currently in control of Harlem. Now, the remaining henchmen will stay in that spot for the next round, and I'd like to remind you again that these mole tokens are only revealed once the game is over or once a reveal mole action happens, so that means they are not helping out with this crazy shootout that we had in Harlem. After that, we can check to see if there are any other shootouts, but it doesn't seem that there are. Uh, we've got a pretty large amount of henchmen out here. If we disregard Brooklyn, we've also got current control of a bunch of these contraband crates compared to the two of our blue opponent. Now, they have two guaranteed points already, and a lot of this can obviously change as the game goes on. At this point, it's now time to clean up and get ready for the next round. The way we do this is we take all of the henchmen from the action board and they are returned to each player's supply. And then each player will take 20 henchmen from their supply and they'll put them into their warehouse. At the moment, we just have 15, but we also have these three henchmen tokens up here. And at any point, you can swap these out for three henchmen anywhere in the game. So let's swap out here in Hell's Kitchen as well as in Chinatown. With that done, we now have enough henchmen for the next round. All right, we've now started the second out of three rounds in the game, and the player who is currently under investigation gets to go first. That means we are going to take the first turn of this round. So let's start things off by rolling the dice. We got a black one and a white two. Well, the black car sends us to the Bronx, which is not a terribly exciting spot, and the white two sends us to Little Italy, where the blue player already has a pretty good stronghold, but just because they have three henchmen over here does not mean that we shouldn't try to do something about it. So I think we will send one henchman over here to get into that car. Next up, we have to take an action, and we really have to do something about this district attorney track. So let's do our first action from the last round, actually, and go over here. That will let us add one crate from the supply onto a location, and we can move this token over. Now, given the current situation, I see no reason not to send this down to Brooklyn. It's possible our opponent might just pull that away, but we do have three henchmen over here, so let's go ahead and try to make something of it. All right, the blue player can go. 
and they've decided to go to the Hell's Kitchen area with this Black 3, and that lets them put two of their henchmen into the car. After that, they have to take an action, and they're just going to send one henchman over here to move a crate. Once again, we're not surprised to see them move this one from Brooklyn over here to Little Italy. That's finished their turn, so now we can go, and let's start by rolling the dice. Well, we can add three henchmen to this car in Harlem, where we have a very slight uh, majority <laughs> with just one of our henchmen, or we could send two over to the three car, where we have three to zero. Of course, we don't know what these mole tokens actually say on the other side. Either way, I think Harlem is probably a better bet for us, so let's send three of our henchmen over onto that car. Next up for our action, I think let's keep working on the DA track and send one of our henchmen over here to just move this one space over. Our turn is done, so now the blue player can go, and they are going to send two henchmen over to the black two car heading towards Harlem. After that, they have to take an action, and they do not want to leave this shooting option out uh, so cheap with just one henchman, so they are going to take it. Of course, there are other shoot spots like these locations over here, but the rest cost at least two henchmen versus one, so they figure they would rather be the one shooting. Now, that is also going to give them a change cars and a drive action, but they are going to shoot first. Now, they are going to roll the black die, hoping to get a two, and they got it. That is definitely bad news for us. That shoot action is going to knock out all three of these henchmen and send them back to our supply. After that, they can do a change cars and drive action, and they've decided to change cars by sending one henchman over here to Harlem, and then they will indeed drive all three of these henchmen into Harlem. They did not like the idea of having two black cars loaded up over here because there are still a couple of shoot actions available on the board. All right, after that, their turn is done, which means it's time for us to go, and we can start off by rolling the dice to potentially load up some henchmen. <laughs> well, it looks like we're only going to be loading one if we want to. Unfortunately, both of the one spots are not all that interesting to us right now. Obviously, Brooklyn has too many people in it already uh, for the amount of crates that are there, and the Bronx does have one crate, but we also moved our mole away from that spot. Honestly, I don't think this is worth putting even one henchman over there, so let's decide not to put any into cars and move on to our action. Now, I would like to move the DA once again, and the only ways to do that would cost us two, three, three, or four of our henchmen. Now, the two would let us move from one car to the next, although we don't have a great use for that right now. So I think it is worth spending one more henchman in order to activate this spot over here, because that way we get two actions that I really like. This first one is going to move the DA over there, so we are currently no longer under investigation, and if the round ended, then that would let us reveal one of our opponent's moles. Now, the other thing that this does is let us move another crate. I might seem like a broken record at this point, but I do think it makes sense still to move this crate from Little Italy back down to Brooklyn. These just keep bouncing back and forth down over here. All right, our turn is done, which means the blue player can start their turn by rolling the dice. And they like the idea of starting to contest Chinatown. That's going to let them put two of their henchmen into the car. And then for their action, they are going to spend one henchman to drive one of their cars. In this case, they have decided to drive over here into Chinatown. Their turn is over, so now we can roll the dice. And this is interesting. Uh, we could add three of our henchmen over here into Little Italy, which is, of course, the place that I just removed a crate from. If we did that, then we would, I guess, be uh, sending one of our henchmen back to the supply, which isn't great, but we would also be equally contesting our opponent. The other option we have is sending two more over here to Hell's Kitchen, where we already have a pretty sizable advantage, though. Uh, I'm really not sure which of these is going to be better for us. I suppose the game is only about halfway over, and I don't really want to uh, send henchmen back to the supply if we can avoid it, so let's go over here to Hell's Kitchen, and that is going to put two of our henchmen into that car. After that, we have to take an action, and part of me wants to do another DA action, but those options are not the best things in the world for us. This one would cost four henchmen and would let us shoot, but currently our opponent is not very vulnerable to being shot at. Uh, and over here, this costs three, which would let us drive, although I'm not sure how desperate we are to do a drive action in this moment. Now, this one only costs two, and we could move the DA over, and we could do a car change, and it ends there at the end of the round, is we would get to add a crate in addition to revealing one of our opponent's moles. 
Adding crates is certainly good if you feel confident that you're going to win a location, but I'm not sure if we want to commit a bunch of resources this turn just to moving this over once. I guess the other reason to do that is it makes the DA harder to flip back over to our side. I think for the time being, let's just go with a cheap option and send one henchman over here to move one of our moles. Currently, we have a value one mole over here in Brooklyn, so let's send that over here to Harlem. Uh, our opponent does not know that this is a one. They could think maybe it's a higher value and we're trying to move it away from Brooklyn where there aren't that many crates. So perhaps that'll get into their head and they might even spend a mole reveal turn to see what this is. And I think if that happened, we'd feel pretty good about it. All right, our turn is done. So that means the blue player can go and they are going to add a single henchman into the car heading towards Harlem. After that, for their action, they will send a single henchman over here, which lets them do a car change and drive action. Currently, they don't have that many henchmen in cars, so they are going to move this one over here to Harlem, and then both of these will drive in to meet the other three. That has finished their turn, which means it's time for us to go. And this roll will let us add a single henchman to the car heading towards Chinatown, or three to the car heading towards Brooklyn. Uh, now, so far we've been ignoring Brooklyn, but once again, we don't have a mole there anymore, so the blue player has an inherent advantage towards that one crate, so I think let's just go for this one, adding a single henchman into that car. After that, we have to take an action, and I just realized that perhaps we should have actually loaded up three henchmen into the Bronx car, because then we could spend one henchman to move those into the specific car that we actually want. You know what? I think I'm going to change how we placed our henchmen. So instead of one going over here, we are going to place three over there in the car heading towards the Bronx. And then we can spend one henchman onto that spot to move these into a different car. And we can move these into the car heading towards Harlem, which is looking to be another bloodbath at the end of this round. Now that did use more of our henchmen, but I do think that was a pretty strong move. So that is going to finish out our turn. And now the blue player can go. It looks like they have a white three and a black one. And they've decided to just add one henchman over here into the white three car heading towards Chinatown. After that, they must take an action and they are going to use their much larger henchman force to spend four of these in order to activate this spot over here. Now that is going to move the DA, which definitely makes me unhappy. I thought we had that one uh, most likely on our side. So it's going to flip back over there and then they do get to do a shoot action. This is very concerning to us considering we have two cars that are pretty fully loaded up here on the black side. So they're going to roll this and we're hoping they roll a one and they did. Phew, I think we got pretty lucky there. Well, that has finished their turn. So now we get to go and we currently have three henchmen. Considering we rolled two twos, I think let's just go ahead and send two henchmen over here in the car heading towards Little Italy. But that does leave us with just one henchman left. And as you can see, there are no spots on the action board that take just one henchman. So that means instead of taking an action, we are going to return this to the supply, and we are now done taking turns for the round. So the blue player can roll the dice, and they are going to add a single henchman into the car heading towards Hell's Kitchen. After that, they have three henchmen left, and they figure they can't get that unlucky again, so they are going to go onto this spot, which costs two of them, so that they can move a crate and once again do a shooting action. Now, they are going to shoot before they move the crate, so they're going to roll the black die again, and they got a three. So we didn't get as lucky as last time, although this is probably the better thing for us to have hit. We're going to lose two henchmen instead of three, and we still have a majority over here in the Hell's Kitchen. Either way, these henchmen are returned to the supply, and then Blue can move a crate. Predictably, they are going to move this one from Brooklyn, but instead of sending it to Little Italy, they're just going to send it over to the Bronx, where they currently have a footing, because they have a mole, while we do not. All right, that's finished up their action, and they do have one henchman left, so they can roll the dice, and they can send this henchman to either of these two cars, and that's probably what they're going to do, considering there are no actions left that can use just one henchman. So they have to consider if they want to go to Harlem or Little Italy more. And they've decided Harlem is where they want to go. Well, at this point, we've both used all of our henchmen, so we can now move into the end of round step. And the first thing that we have to do is drive all of these henchmen towards their intended destinations. After that, the DA track can be resolved, and unfortunately, despite all of that work to push it over, it is still on our side, which means we are being investigated. 
This means the blue player can perform this action, which lets them reveal one of our moles. After considering the options, they are indeed curious about what this mole is, considering we moved it over there, so they are going to reveal it and find that it is a 1. So that means one of our henchmen will be added into that spot, and that's finished all of their DA track actions. This means it's now time for the shootout. Now, just like the first round, there is a big one over here in Harlem, so we can start removing these in pairs. And unlike last round, it's now the blue player who comes out victorious for the moment. They have just one henchman over here, still trying to contest and grab these crates at the end of the game. Uh, next up, down over here in Hell's Kitchen, we have three, so we can just swap that out. And then these are going to be removed, so we have two left over. Next up over here, we have three, and blue has three, so that means all of the henchmen in Chinatown are wiped out. And then in Little Italy, the same thing is going to happen. Finally, we can see that nothing is still going on in Brooklyn. These three henchmen are just kind of hanging out, I guess. Either way, that was a very impactful shootout phase for this round. After that, we can now clean up and get ready for the next round. And we do need to remove all of the henchmen from the action board. And then each of us can take 20 henchmen from the supply. Well, we can now start the third and final round of the game. And the DA token is still on our side, which means we do get to go first. Let's start things off by rolling the dice. Now that will let us send three over to the car heading towards the Bronx. And that is not a bad idea considering there are two crates over here now. Although again, there is an unknown mole on that spot for our blue opponent. The other thing that we could do is send one over here heading towards Chinatown, which has a mole for both of us. But of course we'd be sending just one instead of three. I think sending three over here is probably better. And of course, we could move them to another place with a car change action potentially later on in the round. So we'll put all three of these over here. After that, we do have to take an action. And I know it's the thing that we've done at the beginning of the previous two rounds, but I still think it's the best thing for our current situation because of our commitment down in Brooklyn. Let's go onto this spot for two henchmen. Now that is going to move the DA token once, and then we can add a crate which we will put once again down here in Brooklyn. Hopefully we can take some other actions to move some crates over here and maybe add some more. Of course, it's entirely possible that this is our opponent's three mole, in which case these would cancel out and all of this work to add crates to Brooklyn might be for naught. There is definitely something to be said for those reveal mole actions because you can then plan around those henchmen instead of being surprised once the game is over. Well, our turn is over, so that means the blue player can go. And they've decided to send one henchman over to the car heading towards Harlem. After that, they are going to send one henchman onto this spot. That lets them move and then drive, and it also lets them shoot all for one henchman. They've decided to do this largely because they don't want it to happen back towards them, and they also have a 1 in 3 chance of knocking out all three of these henchmen, and they would like to try those odds, and it looks like they missed. But either way, that is blocking the spot, so it's harder for us to shoot them back. Now they do have the option of a car change and a drive action. And in this case, they are simply going to do the drive part of that action, bringing this henchman over here into Harlem. Well, let's finish their turn, so now we get to go. And part of me is tempted to put three people into the car heading towards Brooklyn, just so that we could then drive them to another location that I care about more, uh, like perhaps Chinatown here or Harlem. Uh, but that is also committing three henchmen. And I feel like it might be a mistake to overcommit early in this last round and then potentially have our opponent take several turns with us not taking any. Now, we don't have to add any, but I do think adding one to Hell's Kitchen is not a terrible idea. We know that we have a three on the spot, and we don't know what this is, so that would just bolster it up. Or I guess we could just save that henchman. You know what? I don't think this is strong enough. Let's just not load any henchmen into the car this turn. Instead, let's just spend one of our henchmen to move a crate. And I think we should take one out of Harlem. Now we could send it down here to Brooklyn, but uh, my realizing that we don't know what this mole is makes that less of a sure thing, especially now that we've moved our mole out. So I think let's go into Hell's Kitchen. We know that we have a three in there, and we don't know what this is, but even if this was a three, we still have a slight advantage, and hopefully we can keep that as we progress throughout this round. Well, that's finished up our turn, so that means the blue player can go. And considering what they just saw happen, they have decided to send two of their henchmen into the car going towards Hell's Kitchen. That means there's a potential we are now equal. Again, we don't actually know what this mole is, but the blue player doesn't know what ours is. 
After that, Blue is going to send one henchman over here to simply move the DA back over to our side of the track. That's finished their turn, so now we get to go. And with this roll, I think let's add one more henchman into the car going towards Hell's Kitchen. We did see the blue player add a couple over there, so they might be uh, feigning some strength on the spot, or maybe this is indeed a three. Uh, either way, I think committing one more henchman over here is probably going to be worth it for us to do. After that, we do have to take an action, and I think let's just send one henchman over here to drive. With this, let's go ahead and commit all of these henchmen in the car to heading over to the Bronx. It's possible that this mole is a three, and if it is, then that is going to be a bounce, but it's also possible that it is not a three, and we'll just have to see if the blue player ends up sending any henchmen over here as well. All right, it's now time for the blue player to go. With two twos, they have decided to send two of their henchmen into the car going towards Little Italy. There are two crates in that area, and at the moment, no henchmen beyond the moles. Now, we have a two over here, which is the medium option, but we don't actually know what this one is over there, and no matter what it is, our opponent is currently in the majority. Next up, Blue has to take an action, and they would like to change cars and then drive. They'll start by changing cars, and they'll send both of these henchmen into the car going towards Chinatown, and then they are going to drive these into Chinatown. So they are removing henchmen over here going towards Hell's Kitchen, and that means I am regretting adding another henchman over there. Perhaps that was an overcommitment. Either way, that has finished the blue player's turn, which means it's time for us to go, and as you can see, we have spent the same number of henchmen as our opponent up to this point in the round. Well, we've rolled a white three and a black two. I think we should probably take this opportunity to send two of our henchmen into this car. We can see that there were a couple that got sent over there by the blue player, so it seems like they are wanting to contest this, and I think we should probably push on that. After that, for our action, let's spend two of our henchmen over here. That lets us move a box, and we can do a shoot action. Let's start with the shoot action, and I would love to take out these henchmen here. So we can roll the white die, and we got a one. So that is unfortunate, but realistically, I mostly took this action so that we could move a crate. The blue player left the car heading towards Hell's Kitchen, which implies some weakness there. And they are currently stronger in Harlem and Little Italy. Now, we have a value 2 mole over here and a value 2 mole over there. But we can see they have committed these henchmen while these could be moved. So let's go ahead and remove this crate and then move that into Hell's Kitchen, where I am hoping we will have more henchmen than our opponent when the game is over to get these four. All right, our turn is done. So now the blue player can go. And with this die roll, they have decided that they are not actually going to add more henchmen. Uh, they could potentially add a couple over here into Hell's Kitchen, but it seems like they are telegraphing quite a bit of weakness about what this spy is now, and they would rather save their henchmen for more powerful actions or to send them towards locations that they feel more confident about. Next up, they must take an action, and they are going to send three of their henchmen over here. That will let them do a DA action, which slides this over, and then they can also move a crate. In this case, they're going to move this crate from Hell's Kitchen over into Little Italy. Now that has finished their turn, so that means we get to go. With this dice, I think it is time for us to commit some more henchmen, and we are going to go down here to Brooklyn because I'm planning on moving these out later on this turn. Next up, we can take our action, and considering I would like to do a change and a drive, I think this is a great spot, especially considering it only takes two henchmen, and it gives us a shoot action. Now, another benefit to this is, of course, that blocks our opponent from doing this shoot action back at us. There is still one of those out here on the board, but that costs four henchmen, and we are hoping that is too expensive for our opponent, or if they do commit to it, that that will stop some of their other options. Either way, we now get to do a shoot action, and I think we should roll a white die to try and hit a two. In this case, we got a one, which is unfortunate, but again, the main reason we took the spot was to stop our opponent from shooting back at us. Now we can do a car change and drive, so let's change all of these over here into the car going towards Little Italy, and then immediately drive them into Little Italy. All right, that has finished up our turn, and that means the blue player can go, and they rolled ones. With this in mind, they can place one henchman into either of the one spots or into no spaces. And strangely enough, they've decided to go down here towards Brooklyn. I think this is the first time they've done anything towards Brooklyn this entire game. 
Next up for their action, they have decided to go onto this drive spot that takes two of their henchmen and will let them add a new cube onto the board. In this case, they're going to put the cube over here into Harlem, and then they are going to drive these two henchmen over into Little Italy. That's finished their turn, so now we get to go. And even though I said I wanted to save our henchmen so that we didn't uh, have our opponent go multiple times, we just have three left and our opponent has six. Now we rolled twos, which means we could send two over here or two down there. Uh, now this spot does have three crates in it, and we know that we have a value two. So that means right now, if this is a three, then we are tied. And if it's not, then we are winning. So I'm worried this might be an overcommitment, uh, sending two of our remaining three henchmen into that spot. You know, I think for the moment, let's pass on adding any henchmen. And instead, let's send one over here to let us change cars. Now, I think we should move this henchman out. Our opponent has made it pretty clear they don't feel confident about this location, and they've been focusing on other things. So I don't think we need to add another one. And let's just move this down. Well, we could go over here to Little Italy. I think we are in the lead, but that would make it a bigger lead. And another thing we could do is go here to Brooklyn. Our opponent placed this over here, and we're not sure if they're planning on moving it later on or if this means they are trying to contest and maybe equalize this out. Either way, I think making us slightly stronger towards three crates instead of one is going to be the better call for us. So we'll move over here. All right, our turn is done. So now the blue player can go. And after rolling this, they have decided they don't want to add any henchmen. That being said, they do have to perform an action, and they've decided to go over here, which lets them do a car change, and they can add another crate. Now, they've decided not to actually change any cars, so it appears they did intend to leave this henchman down here, and then this crate will be added right over there into Harlem, where they are feeling pretty confident, and we do have a two over there, so that is probably well-deserved confidence. We have a couple of henchmen, which we could send over there, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the best call for us. Either way, we're going to have to see what our options are when we roll the dice, because it is now our turn. Well, we got two threes, so that means we can go into either of these locations. Now, honestly, I don't really want to add two over here, and if we go over there, we are going to actually uh, remove one of these back to our supply, only adding one. So a part of me feels like maybe we should just not add any and then perform a different type of action, and I think that that is what we're going to do. So let's look back up to the action board, and I think it's going to be worth spending one henchman to go here, which will let us move one of our moles. At the moment, we have effectively given up on Harlem, and this does have a two underneath it, so it would be better to move this onto a spot where two more henchmen could be much more impactful. Now, Hell's Kitchen, I think, is not going to be a problem. We can see over here in Chinatown that we are effectively equal minus the uh, mole. So not knowing what this is and knowing that we have a one down over here makes me feel like this might be a good idea. Now, if this is a three and nothing else happens over here for the blue player, then we would equalize and no one would get these crates. And if it's a two or one, then that actually puts us in a winning position. Down over here, we are already winning. So yeah, I think let's add this into Chinatown. All right, that has finished our turn, so now the blue player can go. And they have decided to send one henchman over here into the Chinatown spot, which we just added that mole to, so that is probably not good news for us. After that, they are going to send two of their henchmen here. That lets them move a mole, and they can add yet another crate. They've added a bunch of these crates so far in this round. The crate is going to go down over here, and then they're going to move this mole over into Little Italy. Uh, they can tell that we are very weak right now. We have just one henchman left, so it seems incredibly unlikely that we'd be able to contest them in Harlem, even though they only have two henchmen there. That has finished their turn, which means we can go, and honestly, I'm a little bit worried about this current situation out here. I feel like the blue player is currently in a pretty good spot. Now, this die roll will let us add this last henchman into this spot, going to Hell's Kitchen, which I'm not interested in, or this spot, which is where the blue player did just move their mole. Now, I think that this is certainly better than that, and this is the last thing that we can realistically do. So, let's go ahead and send that henchman in the car, going towards Little Italy. Now, that has finished our turn, and the blue player just has one henchman left. So, that means even though it seemed like we were spending more than them, we ended up taking, I think, the same number of turns in this round. Now, they can add this henchman either to the Harlem car or over here towards the Bronx car, and they definitely have Harlem locked up, so they're going to go over here into the Bronx. 
After that, we have both used all of our henchmen, which means we can now move on to the end of round steps. The first thing we do is drive all of the henchmen towards their associated locations. Next up, it's time for the DA track to activate, and for the third time in the game, our opponent did get to take these actions. We were never able to get this over there at the end of any of the rounds. Now, this is pretty powerful. That will let them place another crate down onto the board, and they can reveal one of our moles. The crate is going to go over there into Harlem, which has five of them now, and they are going to reveal this mole here. Now that is a two, so that means we have to add two henchmen over here immediately. We can do that by adding a three and then removing one. Next up, it's time for the shootout. Now this works the same way as the rest of the rounds, so we can start up here and these two will be removed. Then on this spot, we will lose two and blue will lose one. And after that, in this location, we will lose two and blue will lose two. Lastly, down in Brooklyn, will lose one and blue will lose one. And after the shootout in the third round, we can then immediately go into endgame scoring where we can then reveal all of the moles and then see who has the most henchmen in each location. So this is a two. Then we have a three over here. So we can add that on the spot. And blue had a one, which isn't too surprising. Now over here, we have a one and a two. So we can place another three on that spot. And the blue player also has a three. And then in Little Italy, they've got a three and a one. Now that means that they are going to put four down into Little Italy. And lastly, in Brooklyn, they have a two. Now at this point, we can go through each location and check to see if any player has more henchmen than the others. So over here in the Bronx, it looks like we have it tied with our opponent and no one gets these crates when there's a tie. After that, we have Harlem, which we probably shouldn't have given up on like we did because it let Blue amass a ton of crates. Blue has two to our zero, so Blue is going to get those crates. Then over here in Hell's Kitchen, we have five compared to one, so we certainly overcommitted there, and we will get these three crates. Now over here in Chinatown, Blue has four to our three, so that is just barely going to go over to them, and things are not looking good for us. Now over here in Little Italy, we have five to four, so we do get these three. And then in Brooklyn, it looks like the blue player was indeed able to force a tie, so no one will get this crate. After that, we each have to count up our crates. We were able to end the game with six, and over here, our opponent was able to end with ten total crates. Well, it wasn't too close there. Blue has won with 10 crates to R6, and if there was a tie, then the player who was not currently being investigated by the DA would break the tie in their favor. Now, at this point, we have completed one full game of Mob Big Apple, and I have also taught you just about all of the rules to it, so that's going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.